Hey gang, I wanted to have a quick chat about uh, the uh, OSG uh, system uh, or, or company, I should say, not the system, and, and uh, Kevin's designs around Napoleonics. And it, that company's been around for a long time, and I know Kevin's an extremely well regarded historian and, and designer of games and all the rest of it. And I've in fact enjoyed you know, 1806 and 1809 immensely after I, I kind of worked it out. The first time I played 1806, I, I didn't really get it. And it wasn't until I did some reading on uh, more about the campaign and more about uh, the operational art of war and some of the transitions that were happening. And I think I posted about that a little bit with uh, uh, my play of 1809. The seven days of whatever, 1809. And that whole camp, <clears throat> excuse me, that whole campaign uh, really tied in probably the most uh, that in 1806 tied in some of the most disparate advantages that Napoleon had at the time in terms of organizational structure, how he used corps, how they uh, formed up uh, divisions, uh, groups of regiments into divisions how they managed their logistics, how they moved along uh, parallel axes, and how their uh, centralized command and control structure worked. Uh, you know, the staffing elements and things like that, that all came together in a, you know, like a perfect storm for Napoleon in those two campaigns, and in particular in, in, uh, in the early part of the 1809 uh, uh, conflict where uh, there were a number of little battles there, right? So, um, at that scale, which is 1,600 meters a hex, there are a number of conventions that are all kind of older, probably 15, 20 years old, I guess, that, you know, the, the divisions and regiments, mostly divisions, have zones of control, and those zones of controls can, can block retreats. And uh, because of the nature of combat in the time, even though uh, you may have been surrounded and eliminated, if there was a... a a means for you to have have retreated and you receive you receive a defender eliminate result and you uh, had the means to retreat or could have retreated then you're given an opportunity based on a die roll to uh, affect that retreat and that reflects the nature of you know these malaise where typically one side would basically break and run and uh they would bolt out. So if it was a six to one attack or four to one attack and you get a, a, t a defender eliminated result where well, you would expect that you would kill all the guys, but you don't really in this instance, the, the, the unit uh, is put onto this track and then at a certain point in time, all the stragglers are recollected and you and during the night turn, you get to roll for them to see if they come back again. Well, okay, that's all fine. I can see that at that scale. It's pretty cool. And, and it's a nice abstraction of uh, bringing that unit back, I think comes back in a reduced format if it's possible, you flip the unit over. So it's it's certainly lost some strength and some guys have died. So, excellent, like that. Now, the next level of detail and where most of the uh, titles are, I think, from Kevin is the uh, down at this 420 meter hex size scale, hour long turns and so it's very similar to the uh, Days of Glory series from Vivictus, and that's an hour long turn, but it's larger hexes, you know, 500 and something uh, meters. Anyway, so there's, you know, a fair amount of movement. It's more regimental and brigade sized units than divisional sized units, which makes sense. And, uh, but you still have exactly the same combat system. Uh, the results, I thought there was someone here, I was going to have to pause. The results are different, uh, I think, for the two combat tables. I haven't had a detailed look at the CRTs yet. <coughs> so, and the mechanics are the same. Now, there are two distinctions in the uh, mechanics that give it more of a tactical flavor. There's this concept of cavalry charges and concept of bombardments. And you need a line of sight to have a bombardment, so they have a line of sight mechanism as well. Bombardments, it's just you, you roll a die and you see what sort of damage you do to units. 
and then uh, with the cavalry charges, you actually can charge a unit into the hex, which will then into the hex that you want to uh, uh, attack, and that will then put a zone of control behind the unit and prevent retreats. Excellent. Uh, now, the problem. The, so, where, where's the? Where, what's the point of the video? Do I have a problem? Yeah, I got a problem. Uh, because the zones of control work the same, and the uh, zones of control work the same, and the CRT is basically the same. It's not a particularly deadly CRT. There's a lot of retreating uh, going on, and occasionally there might be a reduction. But you're not permanently losing units. is very hard to do. And I think at this scale, it's missing some of that tactical flavor that I would have expected from a Napoleonic series. So, and, 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 then, and then you have the same uh, requirements for supply, the same requirements for uh, being uh, sort of out of command or, uh, and same impact uh, and same situation. So, all those things cause uh, at a higher scale work. I can see being out of command will limit your movement. I can see being out of supply is really not going to have a significant effect uh, based on the, the rules, the way the rules work. Uh, and also being uh, demoralized is not going to have a significant effect either. So the uh, that kind of works at the higher scale where there's really no negative impact other than a reduction in movement and you can't advance after combat in the higher scale. So being out, you may as well not even bother with the supply rules or the demoralization rules other than what they count for victory points or uh, the supply trains or any of that stuff. You can just pretty much ignore all of it in terms of game impact. Other than advancing after combat, that's the only negative that I can see for the system uh, for a player who's out of command. At the tactical level, same thing happens, but if you're going to have supply trains and tracking all this sort of stuff and you're not really able to kill units and you're not really having any impact from from supply based on hourly turns and in this case at Asper and Essling where Napoleon is cut off there's no impact other than a modifier on the bombardment table uh, for being out of uh, out of supply so I'm having a hard time seeing the tactical flavor that everyone is getting excited about in this game. It's kind of a long commentary. But so that then leaves me with, I'm going to play this title anyway. And I haven't played it yet. So yeah, this is me reading the rules and setting it up and looking at it. Uh, this is my preamble and we'll, we'll get to the detail. But I am going to write up and have a look at some of the other systems. I know that we've got the uh, La Bate rules, which is way too much uh, detail for me. It's the ASL of uh, Napoleonics. I don't want, I don't think I want that level of detail. I read the rules a couple of days ago. And I'm just not that excited about it. Even the Mary Louise stuff, it's uh, too fiddly. And I've seen it being played and I don't like the way it looks on the map uh, either. Uh, it's not uh, not appealing to me. That doesn't leave me a lot of other choices. There's a Napoleonic Brigade system, which we'll, we'll play in this three uh, unit playthrough. And we'll kind of take things from there. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to raise that up, but I, I may just post this video up now prior to my play and see if I can garner some commentary from you guys and, and get some impact impact in, input uh, from you. Uh, all right, I'm going to be gone for about a week, so uh, you'll see just whatever's uh, already scheduled to be posted, and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you when I get back. Talk to you soon. Where is the button? Here it is.